Hi, I'm Amber. I use she, her pronouns. I'm playing Edie, who uses she, her pronouns and is the dog-based. Hi, I'm Paul. Um, I use he, they pronouns. I am playing Phil or Philia. They use they, them pronouns. And I am using the geek pro playbook. Hi, I'm Kate. I use she, her pronouns. I'm playing Thetis. She uses she, her pronouns, and I'm using the mermaid playbook. Hi, I'm Kristen. I use she, her pronouns. I'm playing, playing Liliana, who also uses she, her pronouns from the seer playbook. Hi, I'm Diana. I use she, her pronouns. I'm playing Marquetta, also she, her pronouns, and I am playing the lion tamer, an adjustment of the snake charmer playbook. As the scene opens up to the sound of cars driving down a dirt road and narrow paths, we see a, a line of cars, trucks, and caravan of travel trailers of sorts going down the dirt road, um, flanked by fields of dead grass and dirt. Um, one of the trucks that passes by, we catch a glimpse of the side of the door that says Crossroads Carnival, written in faded and chipped red paint. The scene cuts again as we look at a sign as the cars go in and it says, and the sign says Bryceville, five miles. And the cars just keep dragging the path in a line. Um, as you're driving through Bryceville, there is actually mountains um, that come off to the north, as Bryceville is a mining town. And around it are pretty much dead crops, dirt, um, as the dust bowl has already laid and slain to a lot of the United States. The caravan answers Bryceville because where you're setting up is on the other side of town. And of course, this is a good way, Glory always mentions, to drive through town and get, you know, some business drummed up. Um, and she hopes to get people to notice, and people notice, all right. Men look on with the disgust, and women clutch their hypothetical pearls. Um, but with children, the, the feelings are mixed. Some look on with amusement and awe as they know the carnival's just come to town, while others are just, um, especially teenage boys, are just looking on sneering. Um, we follow the caravan outside, on, outside to the other side of town, um, passing destroyed and rotted crops, but when we pass these, there are some areas that are just dotted with fresh, thriving, abundantness of crops. Just seems like circles, almost. You pass some dead, there be some living, there be some dead again. Especially the ones that are by this large white church on the hill called Bryceville Community Church. We see the, the eventually the cars start pulling into this empty lot that probably was at one point some sort of farmland that is now abandoned and uh, start pulling around into a circle, set, slowly starting to set up. And as soon as the car start, stops, uh, the roustabouts are the, the stagehands, the workers there, hop out and immediately start yelling at each other to start setting things up. The camera moves away from the carnival being set up and pulls up more into a bird's eye view and looks, about, looks back at the town here. You can see the, the mountains, the, the town and a little further in the distance. But really, it's on these crops where most of it's just brown and, you know, browns and dirt and death. But there are, from what we can see in this bird eye view, are actual full circles, maybe about 20 feet in diameter, of just thriving produce. And that scene fades away, and we fade in a little bit later. Tents are still being uh, pretty much set up at this point, but there are um, some attractions that need to be put together. The Ferris wheel, the merry-go-round, pretty much everything else. And you can see the Ross belts running about trying to work together. Um, but we all know him as Johnny's, or Johnny, rather, because they don't really look different from one another, but also we don't notice either way. But um, I do want to go around and um, see where we find everybody. 
uh, wh where are you? What do you look like and what are you doing right now as um, the, the carnival's slowly being set up? Uh, Thetis, uh, the mermaid, is in uh, her tank in Sideshow Alley. Since we're still setting up the carnival, there's no show yet, so she doesn't need to be ready to perform just yet. She's um, She has a tail of blues and green scales. Um, she... She usually has to be convinced to wear a top. Um, she doesn't really feel modesty to be necessary. Um, she will happily make the argument that she's not a human, so she doesn't really need to have the same concerns that a human would have. She finds tattoos to be fascinating. She wishes she could have them, but her skin doesn't take the ink for some reason, so she's compensated by having as many piercings as she possibly can. She has long flowing red hair, uh, which she uses to cover up all the things that everybody seems to see are inappropriate and indecent. Uh, so she's just floating away happily in her tank. Uh, and anybody who bothers her, mostly Johnny's, uh, she will just flick a little bit of water at so they'll go away. You'd see uh, Phil getting off, Phil, yeah. And they would be wearing a... Uh, uh, a tank top. Uh, when you look at them, they would seem, they look, how do you say, they shoulders slumped down, kind of like they're searching around, rummaging for food, for a snack, because they're, they're always hungry. And they're the type of person where you can't tell if they're muscular or overweight, but they're definitely the type of person where you probably wouldn't want to test it just because you can't tell if they're happy or sad they just always seem to be searching and looking for something and they look like they've gone through quite a lot um, so they're there if they don't they don't quite see anything in their stuff they've probably eaten every snack that they've brought along with them so they're going around, probably asking the Johnny, asking Johnny for where the food tent is, where, if they can help with uh, set up the kitchen, which of course everyone says no, because they know what will happen if they do. And so they just start wandering around, slowly setting up their, their own tent and looking out for if anyone ends up bringing snacks and things like that so they could be the first to go. So the Johnnies are all starting to set up tents and everything, and you will see a very small, uh, scrawny-looking figure, at, which is Edie. Uh, she has dark, uh, silky black hair that starts, actually, the hairline starts at where her eyebrows are, and it goes down and uh, is uh, sideburns that hang down, and she's wearing a like a very homely looking 1930s like farm dress, like a button up front with like a collar and it looks dirty and old. And she's kind of like watching the Johnnies and, and pointing to them and like, no, put, put, no, put my tent here, here. This is where I wanted to go. Okay, you got it. And then she, after she's like certain that they're doing her tent right, she like looks around the area and then she'll start to like make, um, her way around like she's checking out and kind of it sounds like she's sniffling like as she's walking around and she's just kind of scoping out the territory and I would like like the scene to end of her introduction where she's walking around and then she sees where Marquetta is setting up her lions and she stops and she just squints and Mar Marquetta has her lions set up and she uh She's tall. She's got long, curly, dark hair. She's got it pulled up into like one of those half buns. So the top is pulled back, but the bottom is left flowing. And she really looks like she's just a housewife ironing this red blazer in front of her, her stage, her coach, where she actually like sleeps and lives. Um, except for the fact that she's got a lion at her feet, just like sitting there like an actual cat. As she as she like prepares her costume for that night's performance, 
uh, Liliana uh, has short, dark hair that she wears kind of in a, I think I want to say it's like a hot wave, like it's just wavy and short to her chin. Uh, and she has dark eyes. She pretty much lives in the clothes that she also performs in. So lots of like flowy um, brown and red um, like material. It's like a dress, but it's really flowy and layered. And she sets up her own tent. I don't think she allows Johnny or the Johnnies to set her tent up. So she's currently setting up her own tent and getting all her crystal ball ready and her tarot cards ready and everything for uh, tonight's first performance. All right. And as we see, um, as the camera sort of zooms into the crystal ball and like gets that refracted view of, you know, the imagery around it, uh, the scene changes again. And um, it's, you, you know that Gloria called you all for a meeting because now that the carnival is mostly set up and there's not much to do other than practice, but you've done the same routines going from city to city. So not much to practice unless you're adding something new. She called you all, all the performers for a, um, just a meeting as the Rouseabouts, the Johnnies are still busy tweaking the last minute things, getting the Ferris wheel actually up and functioning doing test runs, all that stuff. So the crowd performers, and it's a motley crew of people, it's a band of misfits, if you will, are standing around. And um, as we're looking at Gloria from behind the group of performers, her image changes between each person it passes by. So one at a time, tell me, how does Gloria appear to you? Um, so to Edie, when the camera goes basically from Edie's point of view and looks, looking at Gloria, she looks like the perfect, like, nuclear mom, you know, like the, what, that ideal of what a housewife is supposed to be, just this loving, kind looking woman, um, just that stereotype. And she looks welcoming and warm and just ready to love Edie. <laughs> I think for... Liliana, it's um, very different than what Edie sees. I think when we see Liliana's face and then what her point of view of Gloria is, um, Gloria is very tall, almost like a towering figure uh, with like low, deep voice and has a, a scar running down the right side of her face. Uh, for Marquetta, she reminds her of her grandmother. And so she's, to her, this small but very sturdy, old, hard woman. To Philia, uh, they see definitely the standard housewife type, but definitely in uh, the apron and uh, oven mitts, looking like they're always, they always look like she's about to pull something out of the oven. Uh, for Thetis, she sees a very elderly woman, uh, almost frail, but not quite the sort that has maybe a, a false face of frailty um, because she's been around the carnival for so long and Gloria has as well. She's, she's seen this, this visage uh, age before her. And as we look from Thetis' point of view, we actually see Thetis in the wheelbarrow now that is being pushed by Edie. And um, as the camera sort of flips and looks at the performers as Gloria's, you know, going on talking about how like, oh, this is going to be another great day. You know, we're going to have a really good night here. This is the first one of our circuit that we have been to in a while. And um, we do see other performers as well. We see... Angel and Pearl, the, uh, con the uh, moving statues. We see um, Joyce, who's our contortionist, who's currently doing some stretches during this performance as well, because got, you got to keep loose and lumber. Um, uh, Clarence with uh, Mortimer, which Mortimer, Clarence is a vitriolicist and Mortimer's a dummy. Or maybe it's either way or the other way around. Either way, they're inseparable, and we don't know the difference. It's just always Clarence and Mortimer. We just don't know who's who. And then 
Dr. Fantasmic, or as you all know as Mark, is there already in full regalia, the, the cloak and the, you know, the, the mustache and just, just ready to be the illusionist that uh, he is. And standing off to the distance, because he's not allowed in, he's not allowed into the circle, is, uh, is George, the rich boy that you picked back up in Florida um, a few months ago, that's been following you ever since. And he tries so hard. And he just, he always pays his dues, but he's just not, he's not a carny. He's not, he's not part of the family. So he comes and he, he stands off. He listens, but he doesn't interject. And the camera moves to back to Gloria and Gloria's actually in the form that she appears to everybody else, which makes it easier for Morgan to describe, as well as the viewers to figure out which vision they want. Because they, they can actually choose any of, they have six options to choose from at this point of how they want to perceive Gloria in their minds. And Gloria, um, through the MC's eyes, through the audience's eyes, is this um, middle-aged strong woman who um, has dark uh, brown hair that's usually pulled tight into a ponytail, these like reddish brown eyes, and um, there's just a, a, like a warmth to her, but also like a viciousness as well. Like she knows what she wants, but this is also show business, and she knows how to handle, walk that fine line. And she looks at you all and she's like, well, with that out of the way, we do need to go into town and talk and drum up business. I know they saw us. I know they, they, they gotten word that we are here, but we really need to reach out to the community like we always do. So I'm just asking if anybody would like to go to town and see if they want to hand out flyers and, um, and put up, uh, and put and put up uh, little posters around on um, telephone poles and the like. Do I have anybody who, who would like to go? Immediately, he's like, raise the hand. I I'll do it. I will absolutely do it. Anything you need. I will 100% do it. How many posters? Where do you want them? Edie. And actually, as it looks at Edie and looks back, it's Edie's vision of, um, uh, of Gloria and... And she's like, thank you so much. Yes. Anybody else would like to go with Edie? Weren't there supposed to be snacks? We, we can definitely get you snacks along the way, Phil. We can definitely mm. get you snacks along the way, that's for sure, if you want some for the road. It's not really a meeting without snacks. I understand. And I'm sorry. You know, times are a little tough, and we, we, we do try to have food whenever we can. <sighs> I guess I can pass them out at the local tavern. Okay. Joyce, would you like to go out as well? And Joyce just nods. And Gloria hands off to Edie and Phil, Philia, and Joyce the uh, flyers and all that. And um, Phil, Phil, Philia, and Edie, who's actually driven before? Who drives between the two of you? Oh. Uh, I don't think I'm allowed behind a wheel. <laughs> I think it would be so funny if Edie was driving the car. Yeah, it is the '30s. There are no rules. Yeah, I I mean, I'll drive if you don't want to drive, Phil. Um, I feel like Phil gets too distracted to be allowed to drive. If, if, if Phil feels like it's to their advantage to drive, they will definitely drive. Mm -hmm. Otherwise, uh, such an inconvenience. Well, I could do it. I'll do it. No problem. Okay. Because okay. Joyce doesn't drive, so that's why I was asking you to. <laughs> All right. So uh, Gloria tossed you the truck to um, the keys to the, the main truck, which is just like a little pickup truck that has Crossroads Carnival written on the side of the door, the one that we saw in the beginning. Um, and it has like the little wooden little sides and um, yeah y'all Phil's giving snacks as you are leaving so so there are snacks it's just like some day old bread and whatever else we had from the last town 
because nothing else is, uh, the, the kitchen still snow starting to get set up. And y'all head out. So meanwhile, while you're heading out of town, um, what are the three of you doing there staying inside town? Or not inside town, but inside the, the carnival area. I think I'm going to brush my lion's manes. Uh, I think when we first get to a new town, uh, Liliana just spends some extra time getting everything set up and ready. Um, mm-hmm. So I think she's probably a bit of a loner anyway. And so I think she's in her tent most of the day. Like she will come out and interact some, but I think she spends most of her time just kind of setting everything up in her tent. And uh, Thetis, I believe there was like some some Johnny, who knows, that took over Edie's job of wheeling you back to wherever you want to go. So I I think Thetis asks instead to kind of be placed somewhere near the middle of everything just to to people watch uh while the johnnies are setting everything up or maybe maybe people distract a little bit um just for amusement's sake uh instead of being uh holed up alone uh thetis didn't want to go into town because um she didn't want to give away the the entirety of the surprise of having a real mermaid at the carnival of course, yeah. No, that's understandable. And I think that Johnny just sort of parks you right by um, the carnival corner food, the, the food court area that's being set up. Of course, y'all have your own food tent behind things, but this is like the one that's like getting set up for like the hot dogs and the popcorn and the, the beverages and all that. And um, yeah, and I think while you're sitting out there and you're watching everything, um, and just to paint more of a visual picture uh the, there's dark grounds pretty much that are like where y'all are parked however outside of that there's like a little like dead cornfield area so there's like dead brush of like um empty and brown husks like lining around so it gives y'all a bit of a cover to from around and i don't know if you notice but there is some rustling in the 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 dead stalks probably just right across the way from you I would say I probably noticed that. Can I use a move? I want to use a move. Yeah, you can use a move. Um, Keep an eye out for trouble. Yeah, first roll. Let's do it. Yeah. So cool. yeah, roll with, roll with Guile. Oh no, that's a four. Oof. All right, so it's a four. So go ahead and um, you would mark the XP. Yeah, you're, you're looking and you're, you're keeping an eye out for trouble, but it's just... You aren't sure. You you see some rustling, and um, I think there's some like you know suddenly there's a commotion off where the Johnnies are because the Ferris mm-hmm. wheel is going a little too fast, and it sort of distracts you. And you look back, and there's not not any more rustling. Marquetta, I think as um, you're brushing, so are they all in their in this pen, or or are all your cats just sort of just wandering the carnival, or are they just sort of staying near you but not on leashes, sort of thing. I'd say right now, this, I only have three lions, and I would say that right now they are not in their pen, but they're all staying right next to me. Okay. They're, not, they're not leashed. Yeah, they're, I, know, they're... I know you're brushing one of them, so I was just... Um, yes. How many male lions and how many female lions do you have? One male, two female. Okay. And you're brushing his, his mane, is that right? I'm brushing his mane. It's okay. Wilhelm. All right, yeah, so as you're brushing his mane and just, you know, going through, making sure you're, you're, your cat's all pretty for, for the big show tonight, you hear one of them starting to growl off, you know, and sort of just, like, look towards, like, a little opening in the tent. Uh, Wilhelm, what? Hmm. And so, like, I, I'm going to look where he's looking and I don't think it was him as one of the girls okay the ones that you're not brushing yeah okay so I'm gonna say okay my my lion's names are Wilhelm Sabra and Zira so I'm gonna say it's Sabra Sabra what are what are what are you growling at today and Sabra just sort of like stops growling looks at you and then just like looks out and just sort of like does that little hunch thing where it's mm-hmm. like, I'm in, I spot, I spot a thing that I don't know what it is. I'm just going to get down a little lower. 
Okay, I'm going to follow her eyesight towards, I guess, the tent is where she's growling at. Yeah, I mean, if you're inside your tent or, um, yeah, it's like, looks like a tent opening of sorts. Okay. And, um, it's pretty, pretty shady in there, but there's a small figure that's, that's in there. I'm, I'm going to go investigate the, the, the figure. I'm trying to okay. figure out what, what is this, what, maybe a move. Is this a move? Maybe. Hmm. I think this might still be catching, keep an eye out for trouble. All right, let's try it. Ooh, I got an eight minus one is a seven. Yeah, you ask uh, on a hit, take plus one forward on the answers you find. Um, but you get to ask one of the questions as well. I'm going to ask what dark truth is hidden here. All right, so as you're looking out for trouble and you're, you're trying to reach this conclusion, how do you, how do you look for this trouble? Do you... Do you, is there a certain way that, other than using your own eyeballs, like, is there a certain way that um, you, you perceive this information and receive it? Um, I take the lion with me, mm-hmm. Sabra, since Sabra's the one who detected it, Sabra's going with me. So when we go walk to where this dark, darkness is, um, she's with me. And so I guess we're probably, I think we're both sniffing around, like actually sniffing. <laughs> And I don't know if I have a psychic connection to my lion. So I could see her actually seeing what it is and it being projected to me through her. Do you like see through her eyes in a way? A little bit. I think it's probably, it's probably a little bit, I'm going to say it's foggy. Okay. If someone's looking at you, as this happens, as this connection happens, is there anything visual that happens? Mm, I'm going to say I look, extru- I look very intense. Okay. Uh, and, and angry. I look angry. Nice. Um, and as you're, you're connecting psychically to, to Sabra and um, seeing her eyes as you're moving close to the darkness and you see this little, um, you, you, you smell fear you smell sadness you smell uncertainty and confusion and as you stumble upon and you're able to bring light to to the darkness quote unquote um you're actually able to see it's it's like it's like a eight-year-old little girl like just um wearing a rundown probably like secondhand dress Mm -hmm. blonde hair sort of just like pulled back messily got some leaves stuck in it and whenever the child sees the cat sort of just backs up a bit and then sees you just sort of like is, is kind of ashamed and confused and know she, sh- you, you get the feeling like she knows she knows she's not supposed to be here, but mm-hmm. she's here anyways. You're a little early for the show. I, 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 I know. I'm sorry. I just, I was looking for my older sister and I couldn't find her and I, Mom, mom and dad say that she she ran off and um i i don't think that's true that's not that's not like her but that's that's why they keep telling me and i, I was just trying to see if she was here and she joined the circus and hmm. we we get a lot of people who join the circus but not as many nice sisters that would be of yours Let's get you some food while we see if your sister's around. Oh, okay. I think I'm going to escort her to the food stall and tell our chef, feed her whatever she wants. We got oatmeal. That's all we got. And that's what the chef says. <laughs> With a shock. <laughs> well, let's, get, let's get her a heaping bowl of oatmeal. And uh, the chef nods and we'll start getting some oatmeal together for the kid. Are you going to leave her there as you go off or? Mm, I'll sit, I'll sit with her for a minute. Okay. And I think um, as you're passing by the, um, to go to the food court, I think you pass uh, both Thetis and Liliana. So they notice they do. If they don't, they don't. But y'all see a child with Marquetta and Sabra's just walking along with her. 
Is it out of character for Marquetta to be supervising or walking with a with a child? Or yes. Is, okay. I think if you pass by Liliana, then she would ask who the child is. Just just a little girl who got too excited for the circus and came early. Oh, well, where where are you taking her? I'm gonna set her up with some oatmeal. Oh near the food tents. Okay. Just make sure she doesn't cause any problems or make a mess. What? Because I would allow that. I mean, you seem to be in in charge of the child right now. I just don't want her to be in the way or mess up our tents. Uh, Well, we'll get a Johnny on it. It'll be fine. (sighs) It's not the first time we've had a child loose in the carnival. That's true. And some of the others have caused problems. Liliana looks right at the child when she says that. It's like, so it wouldn't be the first time, nor will it be the last. Ugh. I think the child is quiet. And then whenever Liliana looks at her, she just sort of gets wide eyed and just like pale. Like, just, uh. And then looks at the cat and just like, uh. Even Sabra is giving you the side eye, Liliana. All right, but yeah, that happens. The chef sets the child up with oatmeal. Um, and I think as the child's eating and Marquette is unusually out of character staying with said child, um, we're going to transfer over to the city, the, the town, the town crew. I think as the uh, truck sort of pulls in and um, as you're driving past, you drive past that big church again, that's Bryce Hills Community Center. And it's like, painted white and has a big sign and it it looks like it's flourishing because it actually has crops growing all around it while the rest of the except for the summer areas are spotted are all dead crops um then when you get further into town there's the bryce wood cemetery that y'all seen before um there's a general store gas station a bar a building um that could, if Philia, you would know, has assemblage of a brothel. But you know, it doesn't ever state exactly it's a brothel because they don't promote like that. And yeah, there's a little diner as well, for people in town. And then, then there's some signs and side roads that lead off to the mines um, further back. Where do y'all stop? And, um, can we have like a like as we're driving into town scene uh like we're yeah. talking in the car okay so i think we're driving and we were starting to get into town and um uh i think Edie will look over to phil uh are you currently snacking on anything no no i ate it way too quickly oh okay so i'm just dejectedly looking at my crumbs Okay, so yeah, so Edie will look over and see uh, uh, Phil dejectedly looking at the crumbs in their lap and go, "Oh, uh, so what were you what, what were you snacking on?" Oh, well, you know, just bread and jerky. Oh, was it, did you like it? I mean, never lasts long enough for me to tell. Oh, well. Uh, Oh, that reminds me. Remember that, that that chocolate I got for you? Did you did you like it? Served its purpose. Oh. Did it make you feel good and happy and it was delicious? I mean it must have been. It got a great response. Hmm. Okay. And then like I think Edie kind of like furrows her brow and uh starts to like kind of fume a little bit you can't really tell like because her her eyebrows are completely hidden but you can tell like wow how her jaw set she's kind of clenching it all right well we're here uh where do you think we should start setting up these posters you can start in the light posts and i'll start in the bar how's that sounds fine joyce how about you I'll join you with the posters on on and um talking to people on the street. All right. 
So I think uh, at this point, Edie will pull up, I guess, close to what she is assuming is the bar. Yeah, it says bar right Yeah. <laughs> it doesn't oh, have an actual title or name. It's it's so small town, it just says bar. bar. <laughs> uh, yeah, pulls up to the bar and kind of gets off of the phone book that she was sitting on or whatever kind of book <laughs> she was sitting on and gets out and pulls the posters out and starts to divvy them up and here here you go phil so we'll take two hand the rest back crumple them up put them in his pocket and be like thanks just walk off <sighs> all right uh, yeah edie will just let him go and turns to joyce all right let's let's start let's start putting putting them up and goes to the f- nearest post and begins to staple them or tape them or however we whatever we got paste yeah and after, as you're going to the post and you're looking there's various faded um other posters that look like they're written by children because the, the handwriting's not great um some of the letters are backwards things are misspelled mm-hmm. and it's like and a bunch of them are just like and there are various ages of like weathered and debris because some of the some of them are were rained on and dried so they have that like nice like these have been weathered some of them have just been torn but all of them as you're looking it's pretty much the poles are covered but it doesn't seem like they were taken down at all but except for some that are torn um all asking about various people all young women from the ages like 16 to early 20s asking if you've seen her have you heard do you know, mm-hmm. do you know, have you heard from her? But that's what you see as you're hanging up the posters. Okay. Yeah. Is this something that's, I've, would have ever experienced, come across before in our towns traveling, like missing, m- missing posters, probably. I mean, but... missing posters, yes, but not like an abundance of, if you're able to put it together, of abundance of just young women. <laughs> okay. Can I, like, look at them more closely i would like to roll some dice okay yeah let's 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 roll some uh, dice. that would be keep Can an I... eye out for a trouble because mm-hmm. like if there's like a lot of posters on here and they're very are they okay let me roll first and then i'll ask my questions okay and this is plus guile which I believe I also have a minus one. Yep. <laughs> oh no. <laughs> uh, well, I rolled an eight total. Okay, so that's a set. so that's an eight altogether. Oh, yep, yep, eight altogether. Okay, Wait. so on a hit, take one yeah. forward on the answers you found, and then you get to ask one question. What dark truth is hidden here? If there's a lot, it's like I go to paste up one of the picture or one of our flyers onto this pole, and I start to notice that there's like several layers of other things like uh, kind of overlapping each other and I'm looking at the first one and it seems pretty fresh like not too um like it's not too recent like not too long ago it's been put up but as I'm like looking through I can tell that there's more and some of them are a little bit older and but it seems strange that they're kind of there's so many like why is there so many on here so it's like all of a sudden Edie is realizing these aren't just like the same, like somebody's like posting up the same picture. It's, they're different. They're different people. Mm-hmm. Okay. So you're just like pulling, having all the, the things clicked together. Yeah. Um, yeah. So you am do I notice, realize. Oh, sorry. Am I noticing that they look similar or are they pictures of the, of, like portraits of these girls? There's port. There's some of them are like hand-drawn portraits. Some of them are stolen photos that, um, of course, because photography is rare back in the yeah, yeah. <laughs> 1930s. Um, maybe like one has a photo on it and it's a young woman. But you do notice that it's a, probably about 10 to 15 young women who seem to be from this town that have all gone missing. Do they have any of them share like family names, like surnames? No. No, they're all different. Yeah. Well, there might be some of that are cousins, but, like, no, nobody in the same, like, immediate family. Gotcha. All right. Edie has made mental note of this. Yeah. But then just immediately pastes, uh, 
the carnival crossroads carnival right over top of all of it just goes <laughs> <laughs> covers the rest of it yeah and i think as you as as, as that chunk happens are going to change things but so as a scene cuts over and we see uh the we hear the jangle of a door opening as uh phil philia moves into the bar um you already see some people starting to look at you who are in there. It's dusty. It's not well lit other than the light coming through the windows. Um, but your car, the truck that you drove in is right across the road. And they can see Edie and Joyce out there. So, And they saw you get out of that truck. So they know who, who you are. So they're giving you like a look of like, who are you and what are you doing in our town sort of thing. And is this a common feeling for you, this, this visual? This, these these having these eyes on you or all the time it's part of phil philia's um act Mm -hmm. you know people always just have to stare at them usually in disgust so they've gotten used to it it's nothing at this point um the bartender is just doing his thing behind Mm -hmm. uh, cleaning glasses and he doesn't care as long as you pay, honestly. Yeah, she's got, he's going to go up to the bar and just get a beer and survey the room first. See if there's any snacks in behind the bar. If you have any, like, uh, what do they call them? Um, Pickled eggs. I don't there know. There we go. Yes. Oh, is that the one you wanted? Oh, yeah. man, that, that was a reach for me, too. <laughs> oh, yeah, there's some um, pickled eggs. Some pickles. Mm-hmm. So there's there's some of those. Okay. Yeah. So um, they're they're particularly looking for someone who looks like they're maybe a bit, especially hard for cash. Like they might take a uh, uh, take a bet. So yeah, you're looking around and um, you see this uh older gentleman that's sort of sitting off the edge of the bar, and he's sort of just. It's it's mid afternoon at this point, so the sun isn't it's not even show time yet. But this guy seems like he's deep into his cups. He's just sort of sitting there with his the, the his hands are just like holding up his face as he's like sipping um, this small shot glass of of whiskey. Mm-hmm. He looks run down and tired and just you know there. <laughs> Yeah, Phil will walk up to them and be like, so I hold, how old do you reckon those eggs are? Those eggs? And the uh, the old man sort of looks up and he squints. He's like, I've been here in the seat. Well, not here the whole time, but like in this seat for 15 years. I don't know if I've seen anybody eat those damn eggs. 15 years, huh? I don't know. I, don't, I bet you around that I can eat five of them. Of those damn things? Oh, man, those pickles are older than my niece, but oh, oh, okay, sure. Around it is. But I keep some eggs, please. And the barkeep just looks at you bewildered and amused and shakes his head and pulls the, the jar over and, 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 and corks it. And it's it's like in the mason jar sort of situation. It's like a big one, so it's nicely sealed, so no, no fungus among us and mold grow on it. <laughs> and it pulls the eggs out, and it puts them on a plate. And five of them. This the smell that wafts through the bar, not pleasant. <laughs> um, and as soon as he opens it, he tries he quickly pulls them out and closes it back up and tries to air it out and one of the other guys who's sitting at one of the tables nearby just opens up the window <laughs> to air out as well but they the, the the scent got all their attention because i mean they already look at you weirdly but now that you're about to do something they're full eyes are on you as everybody sort of just staying where they are but they're watching waiting mm. trying to see what's going on and the bartender just puts the the plate of eggs in front of you. Philia would take it, pick up one of the eggs and just go 
Mm. And just as they're about to take a bite, they look around the bar and go like, anyone else want in on this? And there's a couple, there's maybe, hold on, I'm just. I'm going to say there's um, three other men's like, I'll take you on it. And, you know, so they, they all put up their, their wages as well. Oh, mm-hmm. sorry, it's not wages, it's around, right? Yeah. They have to buy you around. Okay. So three other, three other men will be like, they want in on it. All right, then. So then they'll put the uh, one egg back on the plate. With both hands, grab the rest of the five eggs and stuff them all in their mouth at once. And just chewing as they're slowly going in, like a conveyor belt. And just swallowing it down. And just lick their lips, not even washing it down with a beer yet. Question. Yes. Do you, you don't eat pretty, do you? You don't try to hide it. You just oh, no. mouth open. Mm-hmm. Oh. You can hear your just... Yeah, they just like look at you with awe as, as everything just not only did you stuff five eggs in your mouth at once, it's just hearing hearing you chew and watching it happen and just everything going down without a flinch, a reflex, a gag. They're all just fascinated by what happened and they're like and the and the old man sitting next to you looks at you for a second, gives this like really good wrinkly grin gives you a pat on the shoulder and he's like get this person a drink how many eggs would you say are left in the jar i would say maybe about five more okay and then it has all the 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 juice mm-hmm. the pickling mm-hmm. juice the vinegar the seasonings any other vegetables that were there to flavor so Phil is going to uh, thank you, gentlemen. And he's gonna see. I think what it's four drinks now out in front of him. I'm gonna take all four of them, just chug them all down. I'm gonna start just uh, um, excla- uh, exclaiming, proclaiming about the carnival going on tonight. You know, you know, there's, there's, there's the wonderful lion tamer. She, uh, what is it? Yeah, just, just don't get eaten by the lions. There's the, there's the beautiful mermaid. Just don't go near the water. There's the psychic, and there's the wolf. She's nice, I guess. But yeah. Yeah, actually, let's, let's let's make this interesting. Instead of a round, I bet y'all a fiver I can finish off the jar. I think each of the of the men that fed before, they look at you, and two of them are like, "Nah, I don't want that bet because I know I'm gonna lose." But the old man and just the first one that looked at that first set that they're going to. So there's two of them now. Who's willing to throw down a fiver in order to see this happen? Wonderful. Once they put their money down, like, all right, then, barkeep. And the barkeep just looks at you, opens up that jar again, and just puts the whole jar right in front of you. Thank you, sir. He's no longer acting drunk. He's just like, cheers, man. Without even taking any of the eggs out, just immediately starts drinking from the jar and actually managed to swallow a couple eggs whole. And the last two or three, chewing on them while I finish off the uh, pickling juice. As you put down the, the, the jar once it's completely empty, the barkeep looks at you with a nod of approval because he sees what you're doing and he's proud of you. <laughs> The, the other people were like, the old man and the guy who also betted basically put down the fiver and they're just like, they start clapping and then the claps just radiate throughout the rest of the bar. And uh, you have you have won some worthy of some friends 
because they mm. know you're a weirdo, and typically they don't like weirdos from out of town, especially the carnival folk. But you, you did well. Yeah. Philly is going to take out one of the crumpled uh, posters, slap it on the bar table, and says, come get your revenge later tonight. I'll be eating even worse than this. That, uh, Thetis, um, as you're sitting there, just people watching, you saw Marquetta walk by earlier with a kid, mm-hmm. and you saw Liliana sort of talking to her. You actually see the, um, the carnival child, one of the Johnny's kids, little Abigail. Yes. You know her, she just runs around, and she knows to stay out of the way, because, you know, her parents are working. Thetis, Miss Thetis, did you hear? There's another kid in, in the carnival. I did see that, Abigail. What do you know about them? Oh, um, I think she's looking for his sister. That's that's all I heard. Shame that her sister's missing. I wish I had a sister. Oh, I think it's nice that there's just you. Thank you. But um, yeah. It, the other performers are kind of doing a hop up about it. Did you, did you want to go see what's going on, or would you take me there? I, could, yeah, I've gotten stronger, and she like comes and like flexes. She's like, maybe I'll be a strong man and be a performer instead of a rouse about like my parents. Yeah. <laughs> and so this this eleven year old actually is able to like, it's it's a little wobbly. It's not exactly like the greatest. Will there a ride you ever received? <laughs> but she has gotten better by not sloshing all your water out, or you, because that's happened a couple of times <laughs> in the past. But she she wills you over to Marquetta. Marquetta, you have an unusual companion. Uh, yes. Uh, this this little one. I was just so excited about the carnival. They came too early. Does this little one have a name? I, I'm sure she does. You haven't bothered to ask? Uh, she hasn't volunteered it. You think maybe she might be terrified to say? Most people are. Saber growls. And the kid just sort of looks up and she's like, I'm a Maggie, but Margaret for the longer name, but people call me Maggie. Hello, Maggie. I heard you were looking for your sister. And she nods. Yeah, she's, she didn't come home last night and, but mom, mom and dad aren't worried about it because they said she ran off, but she would never do that. I know just what you mean. My sister is missing too. She couldn't run off though, cause we don't really run. And then that's when she realizes that (laughs) there's a tail sticking out of that little barrel. (laughs) And she's like, and she's a little dumbfounded. Just like, oh, a mermaid. (laughs) I don't think, what's your sister's name? Her name's Betty. I don't think we have a Betty around here today. Oh, okay. Well, I'll just go, go, go keep looking. Thank you, though. We'll keep looking for her, though. And she just nods. And she looks at Marquette and she's like, um, thank you for getting me food. I appreciate it. Of course. And um, with that, she sort of just like slips, slides out of the chair and just sort of like runs back into the, like the, the cornfields. And Abigail's like, oh, one day there'll be other children or maybe I won't be a child anymore and I can, I can help out. You're already a big help. Yeah. And then I think as she goes to pet Sabra, because I think Abigail's okay with the cats. Because she's so used to the big cats being around. Mm-hmm. <laughs> I'm going to say that the cats love Abigail. Oh. Marquetta, how do, how do the lions feel about Liliana? The same way Marquetta <laughs> feels about Liliana. <laughs> they, they're not fans. So I think Liliana's there, but she has kind of moved down a little ways out of the way of the lions. 
Liliana, since we got to town, have you seen anything about anybody being missing or there being anything off about this town? No, I haven't had a single vision since we've entered the town. It's kind of odd. I usually have a sense by now, but there's just nothing. Mm -hmm. You have something to say, Marquetta? No, I don't. Liliana turns back towards Thetis. I can try to see something. Is, th is there something that you want to be seen? If we could find this missing Betty, that would be nice. Oh, a child. Hmm. I suppose I could try. What do your cards look like? Like, what kind of art is on them? Uh, I think the cards are mostly done in, like, black, red, and green. Um, some of them may have a little bit of yellow, but those are the only colors that are on the cards themselves. Um, I think they're faded. They're, uh, it's, a, it's a deck of cards that Liliana was given, and I'm going to say she was given the cards by the person who gifted her this site. And possibly that's even like when she felt the change in her is when she accepted the cards from this stranger. And I think they had absolutely have like a bit of a creepy feel. Like maybe some of the artwork is chipped or faded looking on some of the cards. And so the people that are depicted are just odd and kind of creepy looking. Okay. So what was your question again for the past? Um, what happened surrounding Betty's disappearance? Um, you pull out the Ace of Swords card, mm -hmm. which is just a single sword with maybe like um, just a skeleton, like sort of like wrapped around it in a crown. Typically when it's upright, it's like clarity and sharpness and like a breakthrough happened. However, it's, it came up reversed meaning that it's confusion and brutality and chaos. Liliana's interpretation of that is more that the child is lost and scared versus having like run away on purpose. I would say that it was whatever it was, was confusing and abrupt. You pull out the next card, you try to figure out where she is. You pull out the seven of swords and it's upright meaning that there's deception, trickery, deception and trickery involved. So basically it's a card with seven swords sort of piercing the earth with a fox running across it. Will she return? Okay. And with that, you get an upright ten of swords card. You know when it comes out alright, that means uh, failure and defeat. I relate all of that to Thetis and Marquetta. <laughs> well, that certainly doesn't bode very well. Certainly not for business anyway. Well, if the sister is the only one that thinks she's missing so far, then it probably won't affect attendance for tonight's performance. Well, then it better be a good performance so that they'll tell other people and everyone else in town will come. Yes, hopefully everyone and their animals will perform well. They always do. And Marquetta gets up and goes. 